Hey guys, unfortunately it's me again and the past couple of days I've had troubles to connect my touch OSC or any OSC device to Unreal Engine and actually use it for something useful. So this is what I'm going to cover with you today because it's actually pretty easy and stuff like remote control presets can facilitate your workflow a lot. So what we are going to go through today is not only how to trigger OSC signals when we are in play mode, as you can see here, um, the little bar on the top left is, I think there's a time shift about two to three seconds because it's of my screen sharing system. So don't mind that. It's just there for visualization purposes. So you can see that if I push those faders, this fader up and down, uh, that the value is going to change. We are also going to talk about how you can trigger OSC signals if you are not in play mode. So only in editor mode, because this is something that you might want to do. I'm pushing the button and you can see I can turn on and off those lights. I'm going to use touch OSC on my iPad, but usually you can transfer this knowledge of OSC to any other USC device. So let's dive right into this after my short shout out to my Patreon. Of course, if you want to support me, that's the way to go. I don't think I'm going to upload this scene in particular because there's nothing really there to upload. Um, but anyways, if you want to support me, that's always appreciated. Thank you very much. The first thing we are going to do is go into our plugins and we're going to enable a couple things. OSC, remote control, OSC and OSC in general. Those two need to be need to be activated and then remote, remote control API. Those three things, please activate them and then it's going to tell you you should restart your engine. So we're going to do that. We're going to restart the engine and after we are done restarting the engine, we are actually going into the project settings. Project settings, if we scroll down, plugins, then there's remote controlled OSC protocol. This right here enables us to use OSC protocols and your OSC messages without having to press the play button because we have already instant a, a OSC server within these settings. So usually if you want to figure out how to uh, press and, and, and receive OSC signals, then you have to create the server, get the message, make an event, create an event, and then you know do something with this event. So we're going to cover this in a second, uh, but there is a way to only use your OSC signals in editor as well, which is what we're going to do right here. So this is pretty useful uh, for some stage scenarios. So if you go into remote control OSC protocol right here and you enter your I your local IPv4 address. So in this case, it's mine. If you, if you go into your uh, CMD, type ipcon, ipconfig, and then it's going to be the IP for address that you want to do that you want that you want to enter if you're on a very local system you can go with 0001 but that's okay then you want to enter the port that you want to use and in most cases uh, 8000 to 5002 is okay 12000 is, is, is okay as well just make one up but try to remember it 192 168 8, 1, 2, 4, and 8002 is going to be my preference for this scenario. Once this is done, we can right click into our content browser and we should have a new console which is called Remote Control Preset. There you go. I'm just going to call it um, Tutorial Preset. Tutorial Preset. And I have to say, this is useful beyond just uh, controlling it with, the own, with an OSC because what you can now do is get those lights, for instance, one two, three, I'm, I'm selecting all of those three lights and you can expose some of those properties, which is immensely useful. Sometimes you see there is a little, uh, a little square with a, a, an antenna on top as well. You can click that as well for exposing some properties. But in this case, I'm going to go th to the point lights and say the intensity is the, is the value that I want to control. So I'm going to expose the property and now I have those point lights in here. You can also go to the point colors, for instance, and then you have those point colors in here as well, which is really cool because now you can change it in here as well. So in, if you have hundreds of lights or like 50 lights in your scene, you can quickly get an overview on what your lights are doing within this window alone. So even though we're here for always see, I think this is a great tip to keep in mind as well. 
Now, how do we actually control this? We have to click here on protocols. Now we see that OSC is activated and we're going to go to one of those lights. Click on it and then set add binding. What do we have to enter here? And this is where we're going to take a quick detour to your OSC signal, to your OSC program in this case. This is touch OSC. So I'm going to use touch OSC for this tutorial. And it's going to be a little bit laggy and, and behind. My touch OSC component consists of a button and, and, of, and a fader. The path name down there is going to be the address that is coming out of your OSC device. You can see if I press play and I play around with, with the fader that the address is always slash fade underscore all. So if I want to have this value be controlled by this slider, by this fader, I would say that my path name has to be slash fade all. But I don't want that. I want it to be toggled on and off by this button. And my toggle button is called slash talk, which I'm going to add in here, slash talk. Oh, slash talk. And I say, if it's zero, have it at two. If I activate it with one, have it as zero. And I'm going to do that with all of the others as well. Delay slash talk, input one, there's zero. It's giving you a triangle because it says, hey, this input is already used by something else. I know, it's on purpose. Slash talk and zero. Just a quick overview of a touch designer, a touch designer, touch OSC. You can name it whatever you want, right? I said talk, the name is talk and it's already uh, using this name as its address, which you can see down here, the slash name on the, on the talk. So you can give it whatever name you want. To actually connect this now to your Unreal Engine system, first of all, you know, be in the same network. Second of all, you can go to those chain links up here and I have set up two connections. We're going to focus on the first one. We're going to focus on the first one. So it says the host IP address is 192.168.8.124 with the port 8002. And if you remember, this is exactly what we put in here with the port number as well. So we know it is talking to each other. And with those two things, right, that we have the settings with this with this port number, and we have our our touch OSC signal, which is talking to Unreal Engine, we can now use the toggle button. I'm going to press on done. Uh, we can now see that it's talking to Unreal Engine perfectly, even in the, in the editor. So I'm going to press the button. So you can see I'm going to press the button on talk and you can see that uh, the lights are switching on and off, which is great. And obviously this can extend to whatever you want to do with your OSC signals. So now we know how to control values and it can be re really a lot of values in editor mode. But what if you want to do it in play mode? Because this is an important feature as well. In this scenario, keep all of the settings the same as we, as we, just, as we just did. And uh, you can create your OSC blueprint if you want to. I have put something in my level blueprint you know, sometimes it's what you want to do. Sometimes it's not what you want to do. But in this case, it is what we want to do. And then we have a little code in here. Don't worry, go into the comment section and I've pasted this code for you in here. So just select all of it, control Z, control V, um, and, and, and we're good. So you create an OSC server, you have to set the variable OSC server, it's binding you to an event, and then you receive a message and this message uh, is what we're going to have a look at. Obviously, you have your receiving IP address. In this case, it's again 192.168.8.124. And the port, this is important, cannot be the same. So if you have your setup in the settings with a with an already active OSC server, those two will fight against each other, right? So if, if I would change this port to 8005 as well, then the, the system just doesn't know uh, what, what to do at all. So keep that separate. In this case, I have one for 8002, one for 8005. And on touch, on touch OSC, it's actually pretty easy to, to, to 
to control this as well. I'm going to back into the settings up here to the chain link fence. And you can see in my connection number two, I have a second UDP output, which is the same as the first one, but only with a slightly different port number. This time it's 8,005. And with this, I have a little print string, which is giving us the path that is coming with, um, with the OSC message. So now I'm, I'm pressing the play button because obviously if you want to receive a message in like a blueprint, then there has to be, an, uh, you have to create the server and the server is going to be created on you know, event begin play and all of this. But if I move this, if I move the slider now up and down, you can see that my debug message is going to be fade all. So I'm only outputting my address. So the, the numeric value between zero and one that you get from your fader in touch OSC is also a value that you can work with and you will have access to it by getting a get OSC message flow that index box and then you know, do whatever you want with, with the value. In my case, I'm just gonna debug, print it out. So if you go into play mode in here, you can see it's giving me the value. Now it's a one, now it's a zero and everything in between. So guys, this was a quick overview on how to use OSCs uh, in play mode, which we just saw, or in editor mode. And I have to say that especially using your OSC remote control manager system in here could be useful for a lot of other things, not just sending OSC messages back and forth. So keep in mind to have a clear outline on what is going to be your port and your IP4 address. And other than that, it should be a walk in the park. Thank you very much for your attention. Again, a quick plug uh, to my Patreon, and I'm going to see you guys in the next video.